for a lot of people, as you suggested, Rob, this is about simply can he do it? Not is he going to fall over or fall asleep, but can he be a first tier presidential candidate and, and presidential leader? Uh, that question is that, that, that the question of that is in doubt. Even among some Democrats, the polls are quite clear. There's doubt about whether he's up to continue to do this job. And he's got to make himself acceptable on that score or he will not win the election. And tonight's one of the three or four high profile moments he has this year to do it. Have you heard from any of your sources, maybe just a little bit more insight into what the president's day looks like today? Because 9 p.m. is late at night for anyone, let alone our 81 year old president. Um, so what does his day look like today? Well, today is, is a lot like what it's been for several days. I mean, not every president spends this much time in prep and resting, but that's required for this president we've seen, or for particularly for a nighttime event. Uh, they're still working on the speech. And again, it's not unusual for a Joe Biden's speech to be written up until the last minute. That's been true of other presidents, Bill Clinton famously so. But in his case, uh, separate from all the issues we've talked about regarding his performance and his poll numbers, It's a lot of unsettled things in the world, right? What's going on in Israel? What's going on in Ukraine? What's going on on the border? These things are going to have to be written up to the last minute because he can't ignore if there's some development. He can't, he can't, uh, you know, be blind to that in what he says, and it could affect the overall framing of the speech. So this is a day when his staff will be working really hard and he'll be working when he needs to, but also, as you're suggesting, he needs rest to perform at a late night event and he'll get his share of rest today as he has over the last few days, he, although, gotten, again, the White House always points out he works hard. He's dealing with Israel every hour, and there's some truth to that. But that uh, takes away his capacity for other things. Yeah, he's got to have a good night. He's got the State of the Union. He's got his convention speech and then debates. Who knows if those will happen? Um, what do you expect the audience to be like? I've had two members of Congress on this morning, and both have said basically that if Joe Biden lies— He will be heckled and booed. Axios reported yesterday that that Mike Johnson, the House Speaker, advised both Republicans and Democrats to be respectful and courteous. Um, It was not the case last year. What do you expect that room to be like tonight? I think you'll see some members who are going to be poised, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, to fact check in real time and verbally. And I think there's going to be an attempt by the White House to play off of that, as he did last year, to mostly good reviews but also to put them in some tough position. So, for instance, if he praises the record of Mitch McConnell, there aren't too many people in that room uh, uh, in the House, amongst House Republicans or House Democrats, who would be willing to stand and applaud for Mitch McConnell. Senate's a little bit more complicated, but these are not normal times, and and the White House goes into this with their eyes wide open. If he's going to be heckled, they want to figure out how to work that to their advantage as opposed to just having America watch a president be heckled and do nothing about it. Yeah. One of the big issues of this, of the, the symbolism, the semiotics of this whole event can be summed up by a famous Bill Clinton political expression, which is it's better to be in Bill Clinton's expression. It's better to be strong and wrong than right and weak. And this question of being strong versus weak is one that, that the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign think a lot about. And again, it's hard to imagine a president looking strong if he's heckled and doesn't reply. So what's the heckle? What's the reply? It's going to be a big part of that, assuming there is heckling. Yeah. And what about weak and wrong? No, that's the worst. The worst that's, is to be weak be and the wrong. You know, the best is to be right right and strong. Right. Uh, and uh, and that is uh, that is uh, uh, what both, you know, anyone in politics strives for. Yeah. But it's this question of whether Joe Biden is weak physically, mentally, uh, on, in terms of policy, in terms of standing up for America around the world. That is a a perception that the Trump campaign plans to continue to exploit. And the Biden folks have to figure out how to fight back. And tonight's an opportunity to do that. Mark, just 15 seconds. I want to squeeze this one in. Katie Britt, she's delivering the GOP response tonight. We know she's on the short list. How long that short list really is, we have no idea. Ben Carson, J.D. Vance, Nikki Haley, maybe. Um, How important is tonight for Katie Britt, the freshman senator from Alabama? If she performs up to her capacity, she's a very talented communicator, very likable politician. If she performs up to her capacity, I, I believe that many people will join me in predicting that she's the one Donald Trump will, will select. Yeah.